Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us. Going to have a conversation with Dr. Joan Manick. She's co-founder, chief medical officer of Restore Bio. Now, Restore Bio is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on the development and commercialization of some novel therapeutics for the treatment of age-related diseases. And she's joining us today to talk about their lead program and um, Torque One. Uh, and I'm not familiar with that, but I'm going to let Dr. Manick uh, explain all of it to us. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thanks very much, Neil, for having me on your show. Hey, well, I'm glad that you could take the time. Uh, give our listeners a, a bit of background about yourself as co-founder and chief medical officer at uh, Restore Bio. Oh, sure. Well, I had a career in academic medicine. I trained in infectious disease and ran a basic science lab. Most of the time was at Harvard Medical School, but then some of it was also at University of Massachusetts Medical School. And eventually ended up in this biopharmaceutical area. And in particular, I ran a program at Novartis where we were targeting fundamental biologic pathways that underlie why we age as a new way to treat aging-related diseases. And the lead program was spun out into its own separate company, and that is RestorBio, and I moved to RestorBio. So... What exactly is RetroBio involved in that differs greatly from what you were involved in at Novartis? So the sort of most advanced program where we are targeting in humans mm -hmm. fundamental biology of aging as a new way to treat aging-related diseases. So researching why we age in order to uh, slow down the aging process, stop the aging process, what exactly uh, was the goal here? It's a great question. So we all have assumed that we just sort of fall apart as we age and mm -hmm. it's inevitable and it's due to random wear and tear. There's increasing scientific data that aging is just biology. And this biology, there's a few key mechanisms that contribute to why we age and why our organs are still. And it's been shown that if you target this biology, you can keep the function of aging organ systems healthier and you can prevent and treat age-related diseases. So that at least in preclinical species, the, the organisms live longer and healthier. And so Restor Bio is seeing, does this same biology happen in humans so that we can target these fundamental processes as a new way of treating or preventing aging-related diseases in humans? And does this occur in humans? You've discovered that it does, and um, now how are you um, dealing with the discovery? Yeah, so the validated pathway in preclinical species is TORC1. Mm -hmm. So TORC1 is a protein complex, and it's protein complex. It's the main um, protein that is activated when we eat, and it stimulates cell growth, and, and it stimulates our, our ability to make proteins. And so we need the activity of this protein when we're growing and reproducing. But the scientific, you, you know, many, many papers now are suggesting we need less of this protein activity as we age, because when you turn down the activity of this protein complex, it stimulates repair pathways. Mm -hmm. And these repair pathways are very important as we get older. So turning down the, the activity of this complex has health benefits as we age. And this is the, our, our lead program is targeting this protein complex and inhibiting it. And we with protein complex, the function of multiple organ systems gets better in aging or organisms. The function of neurologic system, the immune system, the cardiovascular system improve. We started by just looking at this immune system because it was something we could look at in a short period of time in clinical trials. And our data to date suggests that if you inhibit TORC1 in humans, in, in elderly humans, the function of the immune system gets better and they have fewer infections. Now, inhibiting TORC1, you say this enzyme is activated uh, not only when we eat, but I guess during the digestion process. I mean, it's not something that happens simply because we put something in our mouth. Is that what's going on? So what happens is when you eat and you break down the food, in particular, that stimulates those amino acids 
in the blood will stimulate the activity of this protein complex. And what's interesting is when we fast, the activity of TORC1 is inhibited. And that's probably some of the benefit of why intermittent fasting is, health, is good for our health. We're turning down intermittently the activity of this protein complex, and that allows repair pathways to be activated. So normally, TORC1 it is activated when we eat and inhibited when we fast. What happens as we age is this TORC1 complex stops responding to fasting, and it stays on all the time. So not only do we need less of it as we get older, we actually end up with more of the, this protein activity, and, it's, and it stops shutting down in response to fasting. So we never have the opportunity to upregulate these repair pathways. So our compound intermittently in the way we're dosing it for improving immune function turns down the activity of TORC1 the way it should turn down intermittently in the way it does in younger adults. And what we've shown is if, you, if elderly people take this, our TORC1 inhibitor once a day, and we dose it right now for our immune function just during winter cold and flu season, mm -hmm. we can significantly decrease the respiratory tract infections that the elderly get during winter cold and flu season. And it looks, the data suggests this is because their immune function is working better and fighting all sorts of different viruses better. Ah, making nature better? <laughs> Uh, because as we get older, right. as we get older, we we lose a bit of our desire to to eat like we did when we were younger. We were less active. Um, we have less to eat. And if this torque one is still on is still highly activated. I guess that is what accelerates the, the dying process. Yes, it's our bodies get out of tune. We have to retune them back to an, to how I know functioning. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that seems to get out of tune is this TORC1 activity. And we have to tune it back down to younger levels so that our body starts functioning again at a young, in a young, healthy way. What, what, what can we do um, in our, our 20s, 30s, 40s, and even 50s in order to, you know, prepare for this, this TORC1 decline? We have a quality of life that equals those better functioning organs. Well, what's, what's nice is when we're younger, our TORC1 activity functions normally. And the normal function, again, is that when we eat, it's activated, and when we fast, it turns down. This would suggest the best thing to do when you're younger is to have some periods of the day where you're not eating. Mm -hmm. And that's that intermittent fasting, like eating 12 hours a day and not eating for another 12. And you know, the exact number of hours where you should be fasting, mm -hmm. you know, if it's from seven at night or to seven in the morning, that exact amount, but there certainly should be periods of the day where we just stop eating to let torque one go down. That is what current scientific data suggests. As we get older, that's not going to work anymore, <clears throat> at least in some organ systems that they can't turn the activity down with fasting. And that's when I think the TORC1 inhibitors are going to be beneficial okay. as we get to ages, which is probably 65 and above. If we're eating those three square meals a day, like we were told, you know, throughout the, the 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond, you know, and now we're told what well, you know, foods that we're consuming, all of the processed foods, a serious regimen of fasting would be recommended, you know, for everyone. Maybe, maybe one meal a day, you know, maybe um, one meal every other day. Who knows? <laughs> Well, no, well, I don't even get that info. Mm -hmm. I think if you just eat for 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. three meals, you know, at 7 in the morning, noon, at 7 at night, mm -hmm. and then just stop eating and snacking, just that looks like it has health benefits. Okay, cool. That going from, you know, 8 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning, around that 12-hour period should be beneficial there is data that that is, has health benefits. Well, that's great. Um, and the health benefits may be as good as much more rigorous fasting and much less painful. Great, great. And pain, painless is good. <laughs> you right. 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 want to get some more uh, information about uh, your, your company. Yes, we have a website that if you Google Restore Bio, you can uh, click onto our website and it has more information. R-E-S-T-O-R. 
Restobio.com. Restobio.com. Dr. Joan Manick, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio today. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio, and I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this show are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.